This video was planned one way but turned out completely different. I wanted to revisit the GeForce GTX 670 and test how it holds up in today's gaming landscape with gameplay of several games. But it turned out that a more appropriate title would be Why it is risky to buy secondhand graphics card or Don't use an old and hot video card in summer. Stick around for the next few minutes to find out why. The NVIDIA GTX 670 is a graphics card that was released by NVIDIA in May 2012. It belongs to the Kepler architecture-based GeForce 600 series and was designed for gaming and high-performance computing applications. The GTX 670 was positioned as a high-end graphics card at the time of its release. The GTX 670 is based on the same 28 nanometer Kepler architecture as the higher-end GTX 680 with a slightly cut down specifications. There's still 2 GB of 1.5 GHz GDDR5 memory, but the GPU now has 1344 instead of 1536 CUDA cores. The core speed is also slower. Like all Kepler cards, the GPU can dynamically overclock when more power is required, but the GTX 670's maximum rated boost is 980 MHz rather than the GTX 680's 1058 MHz. One of the key differences between the Kepler and Fermi graphics architectures is the now unified shader and GPU clock. In previous generations, NVIDIA had been running the shader clock at twice the speed of the GPU itself. That meant that for the relatively limited number of CUDA cores it was cramming into its streaming microprocessors, it could squeeze out as much performance as possible, with only 32 CUDA cores per SM that made sense. With the change in production process to 28 nanometer transistors in Kepler, the core count per redesigned SMX design has risen dramatically to 192. From the NVIDIA GTX 570 to this GTX 670, then that's a massive 180% increase in CUDA cores. It's this exponential rise in core count that eases any speed issues that would have otherwise arose in making the CUDA cores run at half the speed they were in Fermi. The card in this video is from Zotac, a Hong Kong-based computer hardware manufacturer. It is not different from the NVIDIA reference board design with a blower fan. The specs are stock to 2GB GDDR5 RAM, 256-bit bus width, two 6-pin power connectors, and 170W TDP. I opened and cleaned the card, but still the card emits a lot of heat. It's from 2012 though, and the cooling in this design is weak. I don't know if it's because of the specific card or if it's specific to the model, but under heavy load the temperatures reach 81 degrees Celsius or around 178 degrees Fahrenheit, with around 27 degrees ambient temperature and open test bench. This is hot and can be felt around the card. I wanted to try different games, but after two games problems started to appear. A lot of visual anomalies or artifacts occur on the display. Graphics card artifact issues can be caused by various factors, including hardware problems, outdated or incompatible drivers, overheating, insufficient power supply, or defective components. In some cases, artifacts can indicate a failing or faulty graphics card. I tried to restart and cool down the system several times. After the first two restarts, the problems were gone. But after that, even reinstalling the drivers didn't help. In the short time without issues, I was only able to run two games. In GTA 5 with normal settings, the FPS was around 70 and 80. Okay, result for 1080p gaming. And if you lock the FPS at 60, the GPU load and temps should be lower. Kill me, I need something to talk to my shrink about. I guess this is how the fuck it is. So you join the party?
The other game I managed to run is Tomb Raider. I ran the built-in benchmark with lowest graphics preset. The result was average 43 FPS. I say again that I don't know if the problem is with the specific card, but this is an evidence to consider what the risks are when buying a second-hand hardware, especially over 10 years old. This GTX 670 in particular is with quite basic cooling. Somewhere I have another GTX 670 from MSI, much more preserved and with better cooling. Maybe in the coming weeks I will test it. But for now, this is the end of this video. See you in the next one.